This is lesson 4-2, which is solving systems of equations by substitution. The essential question is how do you use substitution to solve a system of linear equations? So our first example is what is the solution of the system of equations? So what I want you to notice is that we have what's called an isolated variable. An isolated variable is any time you have x alone on one side or y alone on one side. It doesn't even always have to be the left-hand side. It could be something equals x or something equals y. But just notice that right here we have a y that's alone and there's nothing else on that side with the y. So this is good for substitution because what we can do is we can take the whole thing that y is equal to, so 6x plus 7 is equal to y, so we're going to substitute it in for y. So we're going to write this as 3x minus 8, and then instead of y, we're going to write 6x plus 7 equals 4. So notice how I rewrote that whole second equation, but instead of y, I substituted in what y was equal to. Okay, so I'm going to now distribute my negative 8, so 3x minus 48x minus 56 equals 4. Then I'm going to combine my 3x and my negative 48x, so that would be negative 45x minus 56 equals 4. Then I'm going to add 56 to both sides. So then I have negative, oops, negative 45x equals 60. Then I'm going to divide by negative 45. So then I'm going to simplify. So 60 over 45 simplifies to 4 thirds. So I'm going to leave it as a simplified fraction. Okay, now I need to find y. So I can plug it into either of my original equations, but the first one will be easiest since it's already y equals. So I would say y equals 6 times, instead of x, I'm going to put negative 4 thirds plus 7. So if we take negative 4 thirds times 6, um, we're going to get negative 24 over 3, so that would be negative 8 plus 7, so negative 8 plus 7, so that means that y is negative 1. So the final step is we write this as an ordered pair, so as like an x, y. So this would be negative 4 thirds, negative 1. That would be my final answer. Okay. Our next example is a story problem. It says a vacation resort offers surfing lessons and parasailing. If a person takes a surfing lesson and goes parasailing, she will pay a total of $175. On Friday, the resort collects a total of $3,101 for activities. How much does each activity cost? So you'll notice over here it says 16 people go parasailing and 20 people take surfing lessons. So that's where the 20x and the 16y. So we can tell that parasailing is going to be our y, and um, surfing is going to be our x. Okay? Oh, it already tells us that. Okay, so then now we're going to set this up. But notice, we don't have an isolated variable on this one. So I need to make one of my equations isolated. So I'm going to start with this one because notice how it's just a plain x and a plain y. So what I'm going to do is I am going to solve this for y. So if I want to get y alone, I'm just going to subtract x from both sides. I could also solve for x if I want to. So this is going to give me y equals 175 minus x. So now I have an isolated variable. So I'm going to take the 175 minus x, and I'm going to substitute it in right there for y. So we would have 20x plus 16 times 175 minus x 
equals 3,101. So again, I'm going to distribute the 16. So that gives me 20x plus 2,800 minus 16x equals 3,101. Then I have a 20x and a negative 16x, so that would be 4x plus 2,800. And then I'm going to subtract 2,800 from both sides. So that gives me 4x equals 301. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And I get that x equals $75.25. So then I need to figure out what y is. So I can use that equation right here, the one that says y equals 175 minus x or minus 75.25. So y is equal to 99.75. Okay, so on the previous problem, we wrote it as an ordered pair, but this is a real-life problem. So we might want to say that um, surfing lessons cost $75.25, and parasailing cost $99.75. Okay? And here's our last example. What is the solution of the system of equations? So we're going to solve both of these. So you'll notice on A, I have a y that's isolated. So I'm going to take what y is equal to, substitute it in for that y. So this would be 6x minus 2 times 3x plus 1 equals negative 2. Then I'm going to distribute. So this would be 6x minus 6x minus 2 equals negative 2. The 6x and the minus 6x are going to cancel, so then I get negative 2 equals negative 2. So if we remember back to when we were solving equations, if we have a true statement like this, that means we have infinite solutions. So this is a special case. So this would be infinite solutions. So what that looks like when we were doing the graphing, that means that these would be the same line. So they any solution of x would work. Okay, on b, I also have an isolated variable. I have a y by itself right there. So I'm going to put 5x minus 4 in for y in the top equation. So this would be 5x minus, and remember it's always important to put parentheses when we substitute in. So minus 5x minus 4 equals negative 4. Then I need to distribute that negative into the parentheses. So this would be 5x minus 5x, and a minus times a minus, that negative times a negative would be positive 4 plus 4. So again, my 5x and my minus 5x are going to cancel, so I would get 44. We know that is false, and if we think back to when we solved equations, a false statement means there is no solution. So these are our two special cases. So most times you're going to get a point solution like our first example. But if you if the x's cancel each other out, if it's a true statement, statement, it's infinite solutions. And if it's a false statement, it's no solution. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.